Hello. Welcome to Matthew Rayfield World Internet Television Channel Season 2. And today I have for you, uh, have you ever heard of GPT-2 or GPT-3? Maybe you've messed around with something like uh, Talk to Transformer here where you type something like I like chicken. Then you say complete text. And then it says, I like chicken noodle soup, especially when I've been sick and especially when there is chicken in it. I like it with carrots and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you get the idea. GPT-2, um, let's see what Wikipedia says about it. It says it's the generative pre-trained Transformer 2, uh, unsupervised Transformer language model, successor GPT. Anyways, it's basically a text generation tool, uses a neural network, um, and you can start it with text and it completes that sentence or paragraph or story or whatever. And it's kind of been trained on just, you know, a huge amount of data from the internet, a huge amount of text. And the new one, GPT-3, it's kind of even more impressive. It's done things like generate HTML and just all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's made by the OpenAI group, which is like a Elon Musk side project. And actually, I think the GPT-2 was used to uh, name his son. I think that's the case. Anyways, GPT-2 is pretty interesting. I was messing around with uh, a version of it called GPT-2 Simple, and which is just a tool to kind of make it easier to work with, gives you like a, you know, just a Python library. So I was messing around with it. And the interesting thing about GPT-2 or three, but I have two, um, is that people have done things other than just text with it. So that had me kind of thinking, like people have done things, for example, chess moves, where they'll load in a bunch of like, a move and then a reaction to that move and get you know the output the input the output and create like a chess bot or I've seen people have um, put in a bunch of MIDI songs MIDI notes and data and gotten out new tracks with it so in that way it's kind of like a general purpose tool as long as you can get you can kind of translate your input data into a text-based format just to clarify a little bit those things are not using the base model they're training on top of that. So like the chess moves or the MIDI data, they're not just putting in a few notes into the normal uh, GPT-2 model and then getting new notes out. They are taking the base model, retraining with a big set of data for chess moves or uh, MIDI data or whatever, and then after it's been retrained, using it to produce new content. So I was just thinking what kind of things I could do with it. Um, and the one that came to me that I thought would be interesting is image generation. Now, there's certainly been a lot of different AI uh, image generation tools. You've seen the, the faces do not exist and the feet do not exist and the Airbnbs do not exist. And they're all, they, they're great, but they have this like, this quality to them, this kind of like gooey photo quality because they've been trained on just a bunch of photos. So for something like pixel art, which try, people try to generate like small kind of pixel precise images, they, they don't really work. They just kind of turn out blurry. So I thought that if uh, I was able to get GPT-2 to generate pixels, they would be super precise just because of the nature of text, right? They're like not, it's not photo based. So anyways, so first I had to find a bunch of images and I thought what might work is Pokemon because there's a bunch of Pokemon and they're they're kind of they're small they're sprites they're pixely so I got I got like 800 Pokemon uh, images here sprites from old games black and white games Game Boy Color games whatever just a whole a whole bunch I think it's like three different games of uh, sprites so with that I then created a script that would take go through every image and pixel by pixel uh, translate it into text. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, ba, 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 right here. All right, so if you look, you can actually almost see Bulbasaur there. This is Bulbasaur. That's uh, Ivysaur upside down. And there's Ivysaur right side up, like the old uh, Sprite, original Sprite. And this, this format, you know, translating image into text sounds like it could be complicated. This is this is not complicated. This is this is like the simplest format you could imagine. So every line uh, has a number, 
in the beginning. So this one is 22D. So that is the uh, uh, row 22 or 23, depending on how you count, of pixels in that sprite image. And so I tried it first without line numbers, just with like enters, line returns uh, at the end of each line, but uh, it just didn't work. So I thought adding line numbers would give the model more uh, kind of idea of where in the image it was generating. So that's why there's line numbers now. And then the D means that it is going from top down to bottom because some of these are flipped. Like this one is flipped. So it says you, um, and that's just to kind of give the, give the, the training, give more training data so that GPT-2 can like, just has more data to work with. So you flip it and you get more data. Um, and then otherwise, there are a bunch of characters all separated by spaces. So normally, uh, GPT-2 is concerned about words, right? And words um, have spaces, are you know surrounded by spaces, they're separated by spaces. So we're doing the same thing here, except for instead of like multi-character words, it's just one character. So here, tilde is a transparent pixel. And like the explanation point is some other color. And B is some other color. I'm not sure exactly what the colors are off the top of my head, but you know, that's what the code does. It has a character in mind for every, or not every, but for a large amount of colors. So anyways, we put that, put all the images into the script, and then we get this big old text file, which is uh, over 100,000 lines of Pokemon sprites. So with that, we take that and we use that to retrain GPT-2. And it trains for a while. Uh, it just you know sits and thinks and does its thing. And then after we come back a few hours, we can say, hey, give me a new sprite. And kind of with some wrangling and normalizing, we get something that looks like this, which looks basically like the input that we gave it, except for it's something new, it's fresh, it's not, it's not the input we gave it. Um, and so then, what do we do? We take that text and we put it back into an image like this. So now we have something that looks, you know, I wouldn't say it looks like a Pokemon, but it looks, it looks Pokemon-like, right? I mean, it, if I saw that, I would be like, you know, there's something going on there. They're trying for, for something. I'm not sure they did it, but you know, it, it certainly is not just random um, pixels, right? I mean, it's it's got a substance to it. It's got a body there. So the nice thing, of course, about generative uh, kind of AI-driven stuff is we can just make a whole bunch of them. So here, here's 3,000 plus um, Pokemon sprites. And I mean, it feels like it just goes on forever. Some of them are weird, like just like a circle there. Some of them, this one's pretty good. I think actually, yeah, that was one I had picked out as like a nice one. Um, let's find another good one. Like, I think that looks nice. It looks like some kind of like almost snake thing. Get some, you get a lot of big blobs. Anyways, you just get as many as you could ever want, and then you can, you know, go through them and, and find some nice looking things. Um, interestingly, GPT-2 also has a setting called temperature, which um, will like make things really kind of wild. So some of these have varying temperatures. Um, and also if you scroll down here to the ones that have not been trained very much, I think this is vaguely sorted by how much training uh, was done on it. Like there was a point where it knew just enough to make something colorful, but like it had absolutely no form. So if you go down here, yeah, right around here, these look like some kind of wild, I don't know, Jackson Pollock type thing. Um, but that will goes away. Like with just a little bit more training, then you start to get, um, then you start to get some things that actually have like a body and then it goes weird again. So it's it's kind of all, it's it's interesting just to just to play with kind of the black box that is uh, a neural network. Feed it stuff, let it train, and then look at the results. So can GPT two create Pokemon sprites? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I think you can. Um, and I, I think for the, as the basis for something that, you know, you maybe use as the basis of a character design, I think it works pretty well. So, uh, to that point, I had artist Rachel Briggs, uh, who's done a lot of Pokemon stuff before. I had her take some of these sprites that we picked out and, uh, see what it might look like if that, that little sprite, a few pixels was turned into like a full illustration. So this one here, uh, she named Imparu, and I mean to me that looks like a Pokemon. I mean that 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 totally could be a Pokemon to me. Um, this one, I don't think we had a name for it, but it was like a flotsam type thing, watery garbage around it type doodad, and then there's like a you know white cloth dragon man with like Mickey Mouse pants, caterpillar bird. Thing. And uh, I really like this one. This one, this to me, this sprite is so detailed. I was just amazing at how it kind of, uh, the output had like shadows to it and everything. And uh, there was kind of a scorpion venom thing. Anyways, I mean, these, again, these don't have names. Let me know if you have some, some names for these uh, Pokemon creations. And she did 10 of these. Um, and I will put these a link to these and her other work in the description. Um, but yeah, GPT-2, I mean, you can do a surprising amount of stuff with it. I would be very interested to use it on some type of other project. I think using it for, like the, the chess thing really stuck in my mind as like an interesting use where what other games could you automate with GPT-2? Um, I also tried to have it figure out some animations for these sprites but it really just didn't look good and I don't even have an example of that it just was bad but anyways if you want to if you want to mess around with this I actually have put up this uh, Google collab project where you can train it on uh, new sprites so you can just put in your own images and train it and then get out new images from those so you can train it you can also just if you want to just generate a bunch of Pokemon sprites you can also do that and otherwise Code's up on GitHub, link in the description, more info there. So just a little update. Uh, I didn't realize this until editing this video, but in June, OpenAI themselves actually released a paper on generating images with GPT-2. Um, and so in my defense, I started this project in April and I didn't finish it until now and I just didn't notice that they had done this. Um, but if you wanna see a much more thorough implementation of generating images, I'll link to that in the description. However, I still think this project that I did is, is useful if you want to just see something that's very simple and, uh, you know, mess around with. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Until next time.